Hi guys, so since the beginning of this cost of living crisis, people have been making very difficult decisions. Do I pay the bills or do I feed my family? In Britain, there has been calls for a windfall tax on energy companies. This was brought forward by opposition parties and rejected by the then Boris Johnson government. The Tories changed their position somewhat, saying that if energy companies promised to invest more in domestic sources and research and development, they could avoid the tax. Liz Truss, when campaigning to become Prime Minister, ruled out a windfall tax altogether, saying instead growth would help people struggling to pay bills. At the moment, the current Prime Minister is planning to hand over taxpayer money to energy companies to keep prices from rising above a threshold that she has decided upon. Now it seems that the EU is taking a different approach. They're going to tax the energy companies who are making massive profits and hand over the money to member states who will in turn support those struggling to pay their bills. Have a listen to what the President of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, had to say about this. In these times, profits must be shared and channeled to those who need it most. And therefore, our proposal also includes the fossil fuel electricity producers who have to give a crisis contribution. And overall, our proposal will raise more than 140 billion euros for member states to cushion the blow directly. These are all emergency and temporary measures we are working on, including our discussion on gas price caps. We need to keep working on lower gas prices. So on one hand, we have to ensure the security of supply. On the other hand, we have to ensure global competitiveness. The security of supply because the gas still has to come to the European Union, the energy of all. On the other hand, if it's too expensive, it's damaging our global competitiveness. So we will develop with the member states a set of measures to take into account the specific nature of our relationship with suppliers, ranging from unreliable suppliers such as Russia to reliable friends such as our Norwegian friends, for example. I have agreed with Prime Minister Storr to set up a task force so that the teams work for this aim together to look how are we able to lower in a reasonable manner the price for gas. Consumers should reap the benefits of low-cost renewables. That must be the purpose. So we have to decouple the dominant influence of gas on the price of electricity. And this is why we will do a deep and comprehensive reform of the electricity market. I couldn't agree more. And this is a wonderful speech and so many positive things coming out of this. So first of all, moving away from unreliable suppliers, taxing via windfall tax these energy companies who are making massive profits, moving towards more reliable partners like Norway, and of course decoupling renewable energy from gas. So uh, uh, what's the, the big problem with this at the moment is that if you're buying your energy from a renewable source, wind, solar, hydroelectric, whatever, the price is tagged, is, is linked to uh, gas. So you're paying a lot more, even though it's much cheaper to produce renewable energy at the moment. And if this is decoupled from gas, it will mean that people who are buying their energy from renewable sources will pay much less. And this will drive more and more people towards supporting renewable energy. Pe you know, if it's cheaper, if you're paying the same, you're not seeing any benefit. If you're paying much less, then you're definitely going to see a benefit here. Now, there are number, there's a Brexit angle to all of this as well that needs to be talked about. Some of these energy companies are operating in Britain. European energy companies are operating in Britain. And what's going to happen is the British taxpayer is going to hand over these companies hand over millions of pounds to these companies and they're going to be taxed in the European Union. 
So in a sense, the UK consumer is compensating foreign companies when the European Union is going to punish them. And these are European companies. Um, you, know, you can't get away from that. And the other aspect of Brexit, of course, is if the UK was still a member of the European Union, it would be part of this fund as well. It'd be part of this initiative. So British taxpayers and British consumers would be benefiting from part of this 140 billion euros. But they're not. Instead, Liz Truss's government is taxing people to compensate the companies. There are a lot of criticisms of the European Union. It moves very slowly. It's not dynamic. It, it's difficult for things to change. But now we're starting to see change. We're starting to see a massive move away from, as she pointed out here, unreliable suppliers like Russia and a move towards more reliable ones like Norway. But the bigger takeaway from this has to be the decoupling of uh, renewable energy from gas. This will allow more and more companies to shift their focus to renewables because it will be there will be greater demand for it because it's cheaper. More and more consumers will want it because it's cheaper. And uh, I think we're going to start to see a real investment in renewables here. And it's a pity that the UK will not be part of this. Why? Because of Brexit. If the UK was a member, as I said, it would be benefiting from this. British consumers and taxpayers would be benefiting, but they're not. And I think initiatives like this should be an encouragement for those who want to rejoin the European Union to look at things like this and see on whose side is the European Commission or the European Union? Is it on the side of the companies or is it on the side of consumers? And clearly it's on the side of consumers here. Is it perfect? No, it's not. It has many faults. But on this particular issue, the cost of living, you can see how the EU is stepping up to the plate. Now, all of this has to be ratified, it has to be confirmed, it, it has to be supported by politicians and member states, but I have a feeling it will be supported. It would be a pity if it's not. But when it comes to the legislation, I think there is a real appetite for change. Um, we've seen over the last number of months how there's been a shift away from Russia for, and a shift away also from fossil fuels. It's late in the day, but it's better late than never. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.